From the city to the suburbs, our region is thriving in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware, and historic transformation is underway. Renaissance, revival, resurgence. We're not just fixing up, we're growing up, getting bigger and better. From the mom and pops to the biggest of them all, opportunities abound. This is Growing Greater Philadelphia. Welcome to Growing Greater Philadelphia. I'm NBC10's Tracy Davidson. Look around and you can see how our area is changing. New investments, job growth, and a higher percentage of college graduates staying here are just a few of the reasons why. Let's take a closer look at the state of our region with three local experts. National Press has called us one of the top innovation clusters in the country as well as a top five tech city. There's been a lot of investment in things like education and healthcare, advanced manufacturing, logistics, and aviation and aerospace. It's a cost competitive place where you can have the kind of quality of life you're interested in having, both professionally and personally. Our economic success relies on many factors, but local business leaders agree on the one thing that's most important. The biggest measure of success that we can point to is the number of jobs that are being created. 10 years ago, we were in the throes of the Great Recession, and we actually lost 100,000 jobs in two years. Then the good news is that we've actually more than rebounded since then, adding 240,000 jobs. Three key industries are leading the way. Education and healthcare services added more than 100,000 jobs over the past 10 years. All of the major healthcare systems in southern New Jersey are experiencing growth. So there are now job opportunities in all sorts of medical fields that simply did not exist in the past. The professional and business services sector added nearly 60,000 jobs. We have more jobs in Delaware now than have ever been in Delaware. And the leisure and hospitality industry added about 50,000 jobs. That's really being driven by our strong tourism industry, as well as our booming restaurant scene. Every time you hear of a great new restaurant that's opening, that's jobs and it's growth for the region. The city of Philadelphia is driving the resurgence, showing job growth in 13 of the last 14 years, the longest period of expansion in more than 50 years. And 2018 in particular was a banner year. We saw a 2.3% job growth number, which actually outperformed the national economy. We like to say that not only is it the city of Philadelphia goes, so does the greater region, but as the city of Camden goes, so does South Jersey. So what you're seeing there is a number of companies who have said, we want to invest not only in the city of Camden, but in South Jersey. I'm as excited by the anecdotal evidence that we find as we meet people who are often investing all the resources into their future in Delaware. You are definitely seeing a lot of bright spots, not just in the city, but throughout the region. The cities and the suburbs do not operate in vacuums, and they each are going to grow more the more we all grow together. We rely heavily on our partners in Pennsylvania and in Delaware for recognizing that we're part of what is now a global marketplace. The lines we draw on a map are often irrelevant to the way we act. We go to where, you know, makes sense for us. And I think the combination of the way leaders engage each other and the way our industries connect, it's really a seamless area in many respects. And we're really excited about what's going on in the greater Philadelphia area. In regard to jobs, one of the region's largest employers is a company with roots firmly planted here and whose exponential growth can be seen in Philadelphia's skyline. Towering 1,121 feet above 18th and Arch, the Comcast Technology Center is the tallest building in the U.S. outside of New York and Chicago. At a cost of $1.5 billion, Philadelphia's newest skyscraper is anything but typical. Welcome to the Ralph J. Roberts Forum. So this is the town hall that takes up two floors in the Comcast Technology Center, where we could do everything from TED Talks, to product launches, to movie screenings. The 2018 opening of the CTC, as it's known to employees, completed a plan nearly 20 years in the making. We affectionately call our center city buildings our Comcast campus, which includes the Comcast Center, the Comcast Technology Center, those two are the real anchors, and then we also have people in 2 Logan, 3 Logan, and 1500 Market Street. It's a community of about 9,000 workers. 
While the flagship tower was developed to house the corporate functions of the company, the new building was designed for a much different purpose. Our Comcast Center is a headquarters building. The Comcast Technology Center, on the other hand, is home to our technologists, our software developers, our coders, and they're people who are really developing our new products and services. Company leaders tasked architects with designing a facility that would inspire innovation while also paying homage to the city's heyday as the workshop of the world. And so that's why you see in addition to the stainless steel and the concrete and the beautiful structure that shows on the outside of the building, you feel that warm wood that would have been used in warehouses way back when. In addition to that, our employees asked to have a stronger connection to the cultural community here in Philadelphia. So we have an entire art program where artists were brought in and they did custom installations that helped us make this space our home. Just like its sister tower, the CTC's lobby is also open to the public and features a state-of-the-art attraction. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Uh, when you, you talk about something that's beautiful and creative and inviting, there's a little bit of wonderment to it. You come in and you say, wow, there's this beautiful sphere. What is it? The Universal Sphere is a representation of the power of collaboration. You have some of the brightest engineers and creatives across the Comcast NBC Universal family, from DreamWorks Animation, from Comcast Labs, from Universal Parks and Resorts, all led by Steven Spielberg and the vision of our chairman, Brian Roberts. Inside awaits a unique cinematic experience that is free to enter. You're introduced to some global ideas that have changed the way we live, changed the way we work. And our hope is that when you leave the experience, you're inspired to create or generate the next big idea. There are so many highlights about this building. You have Greg Vernick on the first floor, a James Beard Award winner. As you go up into the building onto the second floor, there's a fantastic coffee bar. And I would say a crowning jewel on top of all that is the Four Seasons. We have Jean George, a Michelin starred chef who is having his restaurant at the top of the building. What began with the purchase of a community antenna TV service in 1963 has grown into a diverse media and technology company with nearly 200,000 employees worldwide. But despite its expanding global footprint, Greater Philadelphia will always be home. It's great to grow the skyline. I think they're beautiful architectural elements that have only made our skyline better. And it's also created a lot of jobs. And we have a lot of people working here in the Greater Philadelphia region. And they love the city. They love the region. Greater Philadelphia is our home. Coming up, an iconic institution taking an artful approach to education. I want to just put something out here. This isn't a art history lesson. And a local entrepreneur puts up a good fight. People are trying to strangle you. And that's a really scary moment. Growing Greater Philadelphia is presented by Pico. The future is on. Welcome back to Growing Greater Philadelphia. I'm NBC10's Tracy Davidson. More than 1,500 startups are flourishing here, but starting a business is not an easy task. Now meet a woman whose unique path to success is inspiring others to fight the good fight. Four years ago, I found myself having a panic attack, just full of anxiety about milk crate, about money, about my personal life. I was waiting to find out if I had cancer, which I didn't, thank goodness. And so I spent a year not knowing how to handle that. And my mother kept saying, try a martial art. You need something where you can like release this anxiety and this energy. For entrepreneur Morgan Berman, training and competing in jujitsu was the outlet she needed. <laughs> One of the, the core things that are happening when you're fighting is people are trying to strangle you. And so there's this sense of the lights turning off. And that's a really scary moment. Eventually you can teach yourself to not freak out when that happens. And that's a really important lesson for fighting on the mat, but also fighting for your company. The self-described impact technologist is the CEO and founder of the startup Milk Crate. Milk Crate is a tech company that's built a platform so that mission-driven organizations like nonprofits or city initiatives can launch their own app so they can better engage their program participants and track their participation and their outcomes. The platform helps make it easier for organizations to do good in the world by quantifying the impact of their work, which investors reward. 
Nonprofits that improve their transparency can earn up to 53% more in funding, which allows them to grow their impact even further. Raised in Philly by two socially conscious entrepreneurs, Berman was set on a path to do her own thing from an early age. My parents brought me up to be attracted to and or good at this process of creating something out of nothing and doing it for the betterment of society in some way. But being the CEO of a tech company surprised even her. I was getting my master's in sustainable design when I started Milk Crate. I mean, I wasn't even trying to build a company when I built Milk Crate. It was a master's thesis. That was it. Fast forward six years, and Milk Crate is now a B Corp certified corporation supported by payrolled employees and an army of interns. But like many startups, the company as it operates today was not part of the original plan. We've gone through two major pivots as a company. The first was a product pivot. We had originally been a consumer facing app that allowed people in Philadelphia to find local sustainable businesses. And it was kind of like a green Yelp. We then realized that there was an opportunity for us to take that in the corporate world with corporate social responsibility departments and initiatives. Then a meeting with a local nonprofit transformed Milk Crate into the platform it provides today. We're using our technology to gamify and reward and incentivize civic behavior. And so that was our market pivot. But the thing that we really want to be able to measure is, are we helping them then get a grant renewal? Are we helping them expand their services to an even larger audience? The success of the company has helped its founder make a name for herself as an internationally known, award-winning entrepreneur and community leader. But for the impact-minded 34-year-old newlywed, the accolades are secondary to the mission. I do not want this to be about Morgan is saving the world. I want this to be Morgan is helping build a company that is doing good in the world. <laughs> that we have facilitated massive social change using technology that has achieved outcomes that otherwise wouldn't have been achieved. That's what we want to get to. Transportation. It's now the largest source of air emissions in the country. Locally, one organization is helping companies change course by providing an easier path to cleaner, more efficient electric technologies. Greater Philadelphia's emissions rate is nearly 40% lower than the national average. It's important for us to make sure that we are taking environmental concerns extremely seriously and that we are meeting the wants and needs of our customers. We believe that electric is a, a great means to achieve that. Utility provider Pico is leading the charge in powering a cleaner future, starting with their own equipment. Pico's electric fleet has over 25 hybrid electric bucket trucks right now. It's at lower operation and maintenance costs, but even more importantly, making sure that we are environmentally conscious. The company also encourages further development of the area's charging infrastructure, offering incentives like specialized rates and technical assistance. Penn Mutual has really been focused on eco-friendly programs for a few years now. This entire home office is run on renewable energy. And the decision to install EV chargers really came about through feedback we got through an associate survey. We worked aggressively with Penn Mutual to make sure that they were successful in their electrification implementations. PICO's program allowed us to execute much quicker, and it gave us the ability to implement the EV chargers much quicker. And we'll continue to expand the program. PICO is also working with the Port of Philadelphia, who recently installed their first electric cranes at the Packer Avenue Marine Terminal. We have successfully uh, worked with the port to onboard two cranes, which has increased their capacity to provide services there, and we're looking to work with them to provide another three in the coming years. Every modern terminal in the U.S. Uh, and most of the world has electric cranes for improving velocity. So we, this really keeps us in the game. It keeps us a relevant port on the East Coast and allows us to grow uh, very rapidly here in, in Philadelphia. The new cranes also reduce their reliance on diesel fuel and drastically cut emissions. For commuters, a PICO rebate program helped SEPTA complete an electric overhaul in support of their own sustainability program. They're now the largest provider of electric transportation on the East Coast between their trolleys and their buses. The growing shift to electrification across the transportation sector directly impacts the economy, the environment, and our livelihoods. I think we're at a pivotal point in the industry that we haven't seen previously. Customers expectations are changing significantly and rapidly, and we are working aggressively to make sure that we keep up with that. Coming up, 
thousands make the pilgrimage to run its legendary steps every year. And that may seem crazy. But the Philadelphia Museum of Art packs its own punch. Growing Greater Philadelphia is presented by Pico. The future is on. In 2018, 45 million people visited Greater Philadelphia, representing a $12 billion impact to the region. One of the biggest attractions may be famous as the backdrop for the fictional character who ran up its steps, but inside, it serves as the city's classroom, providing an artful approach to education. Our job and our mission is to help all our visitors find connections between art and their lives. Every single thing in here was made by a human being who really cared how it turned out. And that's an inspirational thing. For more than 140 years, the Philadelphia Museum of Art has been an important part of our region. It really plays a very prominent role in the civic identity of our city, um, past, present, and certainly future. Founded as an educational institution, the museum was originally envisioned to also be a school. The two were together initially because it was felt that a museum could serve the needs of the community in terms of educating people. Today, the iconic landmark is an economic engine for the region, driving tourism, generating tax revenue, and creating jobs. But using art to enhance our lives remains top priority. This isn't a art history lesson, but this is really using art as a tool to practice skills that we think are relevant for you in your professional lives, maybe even your personal lives. The museum offers a variety of educational resources. We're going to spend, I'm guessing, about 40 minutes with this artwork together as a group. And that may seem crazy, and rightfully so, because on average, people spend 17 seconds with a work of art at the museum before moving on. Their professional development programs are tailored to each group's needs. This morning, we've got a group of 11 students. They're physician assistant students from Salis University. We'll be working on using art as a way to kind of slow down, to be more reflective, um, practice observation skills. I'm gonna ask you to just describe what it is you're seeing without interpreting anything. The educators here do a really wonderful job of making a connection between the art that's in front of them and how it could relate to their practice of medicine as physician assistants. You guys are already like, you know, going right for the evidence, which is really great, and backing up your claims with visual evidence. We're looking at observation skills and description skills. Can you describe your patient well? Can the other person that you're speaking to understand? Can you explore alternative meanings to things and alternative ways of approaching things? The red and green yeah. are both opposites and yeah. like both like forefront, mm -hmm. as opposed to the darker colors that gradually fade away to the back. One of the reasons that this is so exciting for us is that it is very difficult to teach what some people consider to be the softer skills, the communication skills, like a sickly woman in the bed in the background. Okay. Um, so sickly, yes, is a little interpretive, okay. but let, but let's uh, let's unpack that a little bit. And so that gives us an opportunity to really pull those things apart and to start to understand how we can bring implicit bias into a patient care setting. It's important to differentiate between objective findings and subjective findings, and that was something I really um, honed in on during this activity. We did a study that showed that by coming to the museum, the students not only got better at observing art, but they also got better at clinical observation. So the skills that they learned here transferred to their clinical practice. The baby being born, here she's a teenager being presented to the temple, and here you see her finally getting married. Now, let me ask you this. Would you have gotten that if we spent 17 seconds here? The success of the professional workshops led to the creation of a spin-off called the Sherlock Program, designed specifically for middle school students. We thought middle schoolers could really benefit from being better observers, being better at evidential reasoning, and also like the empathy bit. If we can get middle schoolers to be a little nicer to each other, we thought that'd be really valuable too. The museum is a place for learning, and if we do this well, and this is why Sherlock is so interesting, we open up new perspectives, new ways of understanding for young people. The city will benefit from it. That's a long-term investment in the city's future, but a very important one. Growing Greater Philadelphia is presented by Pico. The future is on. Growing Greater Philadelphia is presented by Pico. The future is on.
Greater Philadelphia is a hub for innovation and entrepreneurship. It is a place where companies can invest, where families can live in safety and security, and where people can find the highest quality education and healthcare. It's the story of the renaissance of Philadelphia, the fact that we have such a high quality of life, great restaurants, green spaces, shops and stores, all this construction, great housing stock. Greater Philadelphia is a mindset and a place that will capture your attention and be a place where you can thrive. I think that there is a optimism and a grit that that combination makes me excited to do the work that I'm doing. People come to cities because there are things that they know will enrich their lives in many different ways. That's what gives Philadelphia a significant competitive advantage for the future. It has an extraordinary set of, of cultural assets. It's important to America's history, and I think it's, it's going to be enormously important to this country's future. Thank you for joining us as we explore the exciting growth of our region. For information or to watch this episode and others, visit NBC10.com slash GGP and be social with the hashtag GrowGreaterPHL. We'll see you next time on Growing Greater Philadelphia. Growing Greater Philadelphia, in partnership with the Select Greater Philadelphia Council. Learn more at selectgreaterphl.com.